The debate over raising the minimum wage is picking up momentum. A recent free press poll says 65% in Michigan would support a $10.10 minimum wage, and that sets up a conflict for small business owners who say they'll lose money, have to cut employees, or go out of business if that happens. It's interesting, Stephen, because what you started off that saying the Democrats were looking at a couple of issues to put on the ballot that would, would get some interest. Well, they're really getting interest with minimum wage and yeah. what some people were calling an election year ploy. You're getting a lot of traction on and yeah. saying to the, to the point, what? What, what 900,000 people it would bring them out of the poverty level in the state of Michigan but it would it would hurt business to the tune of, of half a million yeah well I mean uh, the thing with the minimum wage is it's like any other uh, discussion about how to put money in in people's pockets right there is there's gonna be a benefit to it which is that some people are gonna have more and there's always a downside I mean that's that's the way economics work uh, I happen to think that there are other tools that you can use that have less of a downside than expanding the minimum wage. Uh, you know, expanding the earned income tax credit uh, is historically the, the the best and most efficient way to put more money in in people's pockets uh, without hurting. Uh, business, but you know, also over the long term, the 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 the, the injury to business uh, tends to leaven out. It, the minimum raise has been raised eight times at the federal level since we had it. Uh, the economy has expanded every time it's been done over the long term. What happens is, you know, demand picks up uh, and and forces people, you know, to hire hire again because they need to to up supply. So, uh, you know, all of this all of this is is you know, uh, focused on the short term and what will happen. I think not everyone's thinking about what's the long-term goal and, and, and how do we get there. Daniel, do you think that there's a reality that this is going to happen in Michigan more than you thought maybe even five months ago? You, well, I think, yeah, I think it's a very good possibility and I, I understand it's politically popular. Um, I don't think it's economically necessarily wise, to Steve's point, um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it happen. Um, and then you let the chips fall. I mean, the reality is you talk about the, the economy expanding. The economy has not expanded at any great rate for years. Um, and we have been kind of in a slow growth mode for a very long time. Uh, you can blame all sorts of things. You can blame equity markets. You can blame Obamacare. You can blame, I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, but I think what it would be safe to say is that if you do raise the minimum wage, you, you run the risk of, of kind of going pushing the unemployment rate in a different direction, of, of, of dampening uh, small business hiring, uh, and that's a reality. I think the thing that, I think what this speaks to is the disconnect between the political world and the business world. And I'm always struck by the fact that politicians, uh, when, when they see a politically popular um, <laughs> issue, will go there, and they, they totally become disconnected from how business, or as one of my good friends says, how money really oh, works, I can oh, well, work, which yeah. is what we see with Obamacare. You know, well, but uh, we've also seen that with Rick Snyder cutting the earned income tax credit, right? That, that's a wonderful tool that has over and over again shown that you can put more money in people's pockets without the negative uh, financial impacts, and he goes and cuts it. Well, you know, I don't think that was such a good idea. That, that had nothing to do with economics. All right. Well, 